Thanks again for staying with Africa News Network First Fast Live. My name is Cindy Mabi. Good evening to you. An independent broadcast company cancelled its contract with Ambit Recruitment after a racist job post appeared on behalf of Mnet for a vacancy of a white English-speaking commissioning editor. Mnet responded in a statement about firing Ambit and asked for an apology, plus the recruitment from subcontractor Kandich Consulting, which was the final point of call of placing the advert. The job post reads... As Emlet executive position is for a white English speaking commissioning editor, as this role is for someone who will produce soapies and programs in this specific demographic. Emlet has also vowed to have the job advert removed from platforms as they continue refuting any knowledge of such racist worded adverts. Though Mnet has vowed to have the job advert removed, but the entire episode raises several questions. And this is, why has the name of the consultant not been revealed who drafted the racist job ad? And who approved the ad at Mnet and at Kadi uh, Consulting and at Ambit Resources? And will the culprits get away despite posting such a brazen racist job advertisement? And the lines are open as always, 011-542-2186. You can join us on social media. It's at ANN7TV or at I am Cindy Mabi. Dirk Fisser is a social media expert and he joins us in studio. We're expecting William Bird, director at Media Monitoring Africa, uh, hoping to, to also engage with him. Good evening to you, Dirk, and thanks so much for, for joining us. I mean, if you just look at the process of engagement between a client and a service provider, especially if you're going to represent the company in the caliber of professionals that you want to recruit. Where does the buck stop in, in, in terms of who signs off the copy? Sure. It's, it's such a, it, it's a difficult one and there needs to be processes. The, what I saw what happened in this is that Mnet had contracted to a, a, re, a recruitment agency who then subcontracted the posting of the advert so you've already jumped through three or four hoops before this ad was posted and at the end of the day it mnet needs to be accountable for it because it's coming from mnet you know what i mean so it's 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 a very sticky situation but i mean obviously the people that posted the ad as well also need to be held responsible and accountable for it because it was purely pure a poor judgment on their part i mean in the political climate that we're in at the moment in South Africa, you know, people are catching feels very quickly when it comes to race. And it's not something that you need to play with. Mm. But I mean, we're talking about a multinational conglomerate. I mean, multi-choice Mnet Naspers mm. are not the kind of company which is like a, a Mickey Mouse or a Spaza shop, as sure. it were. I mean, processes, they've been in existence almost 25 years. Yeah. They've got global interest and uh, a huge market share. These kind of things ought not to happen. Or are they too big in, or, uh, for them to even observe the little things? No, they, they shouldn't happen. Like you very rightly said, I mean, they've been around for 20 odd years. They should have this thing waxed by now and it shouldn't be happening. But having said that, you know, things do fall through the cracks as with any big organization um, and it, it should have been managed properly. It really should have been managed. Somebody should have been looking at it from start to finish making sure that it was done right, the yeah. right way. I mean, it's easy to just jump on the bandwagon and say, yes, Mnet is racist in this particular advert. Mm. Uh, we've seen it with Gareth Cliff in terms of misunderstanding of what freedom of speech is. He sure. eventually won the case. That they're not very, when it comes to interpersonal uh, issues and, and managing mm. what possibly could have been prevented internally, they have not done so. So question is, um, can the agency even justify that when they're looking for a specific candidate for a role in a specific demographic, we need to tone it down. We can't overtly say it has to be a white woman, English speaking. You sort of, you know, generalize it, yet you know who your, your candidate is. You know, it's, it's actually unlawful to say who you're actually looking for. As far as recruitment goes, you're not allowed to do that. And with Mnet being a level one triple BE company, they would know that. So I'm sure the brief went out saying that they're looking for a commissioning editor and whatever happens behind closed doors, whichever candidate they choose, that's up to them. The advert needs to go out stating that it's an AA position or an EE position and the decision then needs to be made for the right qualified candidate. But you cannot, I mean, we saw it on Twitter blow up, you cannot specify it's a white male or 
for that matter, it's a black female, or you, you can't play the race card in this sort of situation because you need to be open and inclusive. Mm. So, so maybe it's about labor laws or what it is you can mm. or cannot do from the recruitment agency side. Uh, but again, I mean, we see these kind of racist, nuanced incidents come up. And as you're saying, we're very on tenterhooks. You know, yeah. you just say the K word or black yeah. or, you know, uh, it's regarded as being divisive. Should we just brush it off and say, oh, well, you know, they've dealt with the responsible recruitment agencies. We're back to being loyal to, mm. to our multi-choice, etc. I don't think we're that we can brush it off and I think the, the proactive response in this as we've seen online and in social media has been the right response. They haven't, they've distanced, them, distanced themselves from the decision of the agency but they've taken accountability for the post that was made and um, the CEO has come out and said that it's not within their policy. They've made those statements which, which is good. A lot of big corporates will distance themselves and rather shut off and pass the buck. But we can, you know, we can give them kudos for saying, you know, they've actually taken it and said, you know, it was a mistake and we are very sorry for it. And they've made efforts to remove that ad wherever it's been posted. Hmm. But what about the damage to reputation and, you know, and just the bitter taste, I think, to, to us as consumers of multi-choice? Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's, it's going to leave a bitter taste, but I don't know if it's going to damage reputation. Um, it's it's going to have people upset and it's going to have people asking questions and you might find that they're going to be looked at a lot closer now as far as what they're posting and where they're posting it. Um, but as you, as you rightly know, I mean, they've got a mil however many million subscribers, they're not going to lose viewers mm. on it, but they need to be very tactical now on the message that they put forward to show that they are actually inclusive of the South African public. All right, let's get a, a, a view or perspective from our viewers. Uh, Hilton in Cape Town, thanks for your patience. And Jay, we come to you next in Etigwini. Hello to you, Hilton. Hi, Sunny. How are you? I'm very well. How are you doing? Not too bad, thank you. Mm, what's your comment or question? Sunny, I, I agree with what they say about the whites only. Advert. Mm. But just a bit of a background. Um, the corporate people, the corporates, they take up all the high, highly qualified people. Hilton, just turn down your TV set. It's giving us feedback and make your... your okay, sorry, 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 okay, sorry. That's fine. Carry on. Okay. So the corporates take up all the big people, all the, all the qualified people. And when I went to the ANC in the Western Cape to get a partner to join me to become a BE company... I still haven't received any, any feedback. It's not, it's not about whites only. Yeah, but Hilton, I think, I think your point of call is wrong. I, I don't know if the ANC is a recruitment agency per se, but, you know, the fact that we have a skill shortage, uh, that's another debate you, that, that we could have another time. But I think even when you're looking for a specific rare skill, the issue is that you, in this country, by law, you're not allowed to specify what race it is because of our background uh, and, and where we need to, to, to be in changing the complexion of the economy. I hope that makes sense. All right, Hilton, thanks so much. Jay in Durban, hello to you. Hello, good evening, ma'am. Good hello. evening, sir. How are you? Okay, fine. Keeping well, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, I'm not a politician, but uh, just a view. I mean, I know that Edward was put in for whites only, but uh, it could have been put in by some, you know, uh, mad person or something just to create, a, you know, problems or something of that sort. You know, we can look at it that way also. Racism, I don't think it's going to ever stop in South Africa, man. It's very, very difficult, you know, because today it's you, tomorrow me, somebody else. It's going to carry on. Where does it stop, man? You tell me. How does it stop and how is it going to stop, man? Mm. So I think it's something we're going to grapple with, uh, you know, for, for generations to come. Uh, there are efforts being made in terms of dialogues and there's literature and social platforms where people try and create that national identity. But nonetheless, it's all healthy that we can debate about it without um, necessarily being hostile or, or combative. So thanks so much for your call. Hello, Cindy. Ninjani. The rights in the court, look at that. I said right, not. Yes, and you know, Cindy, this is very disgusting, and it's a, it's a, it's, it's a dream that a rainbow nation exists in South Africa. It does not exist. 
you know. It because it's just a window dressing things, in, you know. It and also it was because we respected the old man, the late state president of South Africa, Nelson Holtata Mandela. But the actual fact, it is not there. The white people of South Africa has not welcomed the black population and even the democracy of, of, of our land. You can go all over the way quoting the constitution of the Republic of South Africa, but it does not heal the broken hearts and, and minds of the society of South Africa. That advert was very much uh, undermining to the black nation at all. Mm. You know? yeah. Thank you so much. And I think it obviously conjures other emotions deep rooted uh, and, and, you know, opens a Pandora's box where we talk about displacement or land dispossession, etc. Mm. We don't want to go there. But I just think in terms of responsible corporate South Africa, we've seen with the figures from the employment equity reports uh, in terms of the positions, be it at the J JSE, be it at executive level, uh, and, and, and also specialized uh, skills, yeah. that it's not reflective of the democra demographics of the country. So I don't think it's it would probably be naive if we said, look, it was just a mistake mm. and this is not necessarily uh, uh, MNET's policy. Yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, and I was looking on social media today just about, just around this topic and you, you're seeing a lot of the, the people in South Africa that are going, when are we going to get through this? When are we going to get over this? When are big corporates going to say, we want to be inclusive? You know, and it's, it's, it's a good, mature conversation that we need to have with South Africans. We need to be able to stand up and not fight against each other, but ask those hard questions. And you're seeing those hard questions on social media platforms. Unfortunately, do the big CEOs see those conversations or are they hid from them? That's the question we, we need to ask. We need accountable leadership in every sphere of South Africa. Yeah. So, so let, let's talk about the position in itself that it's a white English speaking professional who can create content specifically for reality or soapies, mm. you know, because that's the demographic that they're targeting, sure. white English speaking female. Uh, so ought they then, is the insinuation that no other person would be able to fulfill, no other creative, because, yeah. you know, creativity has got color in it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's completely absurd that, it, that you would think that only a white male would be able to produce white reality shows, which is completely absurd. If you look at the viewing audience of South Africa, it's majority middle class African people, you know? And it's not to say that an African person can, cannot create a white reality show. Creativity is creativity. And you might be surprised at the great content that comes out because there's this diverse viewpoint. You know, we can't put people in boxes anymore. We need to be able to nurture creativity across the board. Yeah, Joe was just asking, and I could hear the frustration in his voice, um, you know, saying that we're just exhausted. Can mm. we get to the point where at least one day we don't hear the, the racism and, and all sorts of, of accusations, but in holding um, corporates also accountable, it mm. does seem to just fizzle out in the social realm yeah. and nothing else, there's no penalty okay, this company will probably not be blacklisted, you know, mm. Ambit and Cuddy. They, they'll probably get jobs elsewhere or, or maybe another division of Ambit, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So they, 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 there's absolute impunity. No, you know, I'm, I, I'm so tired of, you know, the problem is something like this will happen. And as you rightly said, tomorrow there's going to be another thing. And then the next day there's going to be another thing. And it all just gets swept under the rug. But... What we're seeing is that we're seeing consumers being more alert to when these things happen. And they start calling these, these corporates out because even though something might happen tomorrow, God forbid, they still are holding on to this issue because they want to be in that conversation and it needs to be sorted out. And we're looking for resolution, especially as young South Africans. You know, millennials between 24 and 35 are looking for resolution and they're looking for change in their society. And they're going to hold on to that until the, whoever it is, the, the thought starters or leaders say, OK, now we're ready to change. But it's getting that process of getting them ready to change. That's the, yeah. the big thing. But, but could you say also that it's a microcosm of what's generally happening, not only in the political space, mm. but also uh, we've seen 
collusion and all sorts of yeah. uh, corrupt behavior in, in, in corporate South Africa. Mm. And nothing again happens there. That an executive at Mnet in the cushy, comfortable, air-conditioned office, yeah. the only thing they have to do is terminate a three-month contract because the you know, campaigns are generally short-lived. Mm. It doesn't impact in any other way. No, it doesn't impact. And the thing is, you've got you've to look at who this recruitment ad would have affected. So it's not just for now, it's for two months, three months. You know, people that would have applied and joined the organization, those are the people that are being affected, but now they're not given that chance. So we need to find out who those people would be and what that roll-on effect would be, because it's not just a post. It's not just an ad. It's affecting people's lives, because as you, as you said earlier, people are looking for work. People are desperate to be involved. But putting something like this, causes division and causes derision in the larger South African community. So maybe it is a microcosm, but it speaks for the whole. Mm. All right, let's take a call. Uh, Petrus or Petrus in Cape Town. Hello to you. Hi, Cindy. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm not so bad. Mm. Cindy, um, I'm calling from Cape Town. Listen, Cindy, you know uh, 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 discrimination and racism is actually worthy in Cape Town. I don't know other places. I've never been in, like, in Joburg and areas. But I can tell you, I've been around, I've been working in the private sector, I'm working for government department now. I, I've experienced the same. You know, when you are, you are actually a black person, if you get into a position or management position, they will never even give you a, 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 a couple of to, to to see if you are capable of. They will actually judge you from the first start at uh, uh, the position. And they will start criticizing you. Mm. You know, I used to work in the company in the private sector where I, I was a technician. The, the company will send me the, the boss where I have to do uh, uh, my task. You will even ask me, who are you coming with here? Because the first time I come here with the party, you will see he's a black person. He doesn't even recognize that the black person will be able to... to, to yeah, Beatrice, I, I, we get the, the point. I think you either go to the Equality Court, but we have to hold them accountable if we are to deal um, meaningfully with, with issues of discrimination and racism. Do what you need to do and elevate it to the furthest echelons that you can, um, you know, so, so we can move on. Thanks so much for sharing. And Sandile and Durban, good evening to you. Good evening, how are you? I'm very well, Sandile. How are you? I'm, I'm all right, I'm all right. Uh, it's a very, very touchy subject you have today. Um, really, it's, it's, it's really, it's, um, it's a tragedy, um, that at this era, uh, we, we, we need to make noise. We need to, we need to, we need to, we need to strike. We need to, we need to do all these things, um, just to get our point, uh, out when they were, there are departments, there are people who, who are supposed to vet these things, um, and make sure that when they come out, they come out and um, they are friendly um, the way they've been put, more especially when it comes to advertisement. But uh, what I'm saying right now is um, this, we know it's been happening before. We're going to see it. Um, the agency, it's still going to, it's still going to have jobs. They still going to, it's going to go underground maybe for two to three months. They still going to, gonna give them jobs and um, we know it's a vicious cycle it's what has been happening all this time mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is um, we just need to um, we just need to keep talking and, and hope that one day um, one day um, maybe some people will wake up and, and, and realize that um, whatever they trying to do or they trying to to approve, it's not going to work. But thank you so much. Siabonga Gakolo Sandile calling us from Eteguene. And, and being an eternal optim optimist myself is that you can correct the bad behavior without necessarily being entangled in all of this murky, dark past, you know, that we come from. Brian and Pretoria, good evening to you. Hi there. Hi. Let's be honest. I think the actual intention or the actual instruction was exactly what was uh, advertised. Uh, that was the intention, is just how the message got out. And unfortunately, this is how the third party understood the intention and then made the error by blatantly 
uh, asking for a white person. So I think there's no way that a, a NGO or a third party down the line will automatically start writing a advert if there wasn't some instruction coming from above. So the intention was there, it's just how the message was communicated. I strongly yeah. agree with you, Brian, and, and, and I totally believe that, uh, you know, you take a brief from a client verbatim and you ask all the sorts of details around the demographics, age, uh, what qualifications that Mnet cannot uh, wash them, their, 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 their hands off or absolve themselves uh, of any responsibility. And breaking news just in, while the Mnet CEO refused to come to the studio, Mnet has responded on email to our questions and they say that it has a zero tolerance approach to racism and takes incidents like these very seriously. And they say, and I quote, we terminated the services of our recruitment agency. They accepted the termination and take full responsibility for their part in this incident. They also apologize unreservedly. The job advertisement has been removed from all platforms by relevant suppliers and they say that that they are reviewing and tightening their engagement process with recruitment agencies to ensure that incidents like these don't happen again, end quote. All right, that's such a lovely letter to reassure us that, look, you know, they couldn't make the time to come in studio. Nonetheless, had the, uh, took the effort to write a responding email to our questions. We appreciate. Ronnie, hello to you in Pretoria. Hello, ma'am. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right, Cindy. I'm, I'm not in Pretoria. I'm in Cape Town. I beg your pardon, sir. Yes, I'm in Cape Town. Okay. Uh, look here, Cindy. These people who are, who are practicing racism, they have looked at the country's laws and loopholes and they are taking advantage. Because they know exactly what this company will do, what this country will do, if any, if anybody is found to be guilty on such such cases, they know the country doesn't take it serious. They know they will, they won't be anything that will come to them that is very serious. So they they can do whatever they want. But especially here in Cape Town, they do exactly like the other caller who called before me was saying. They do whatever they want because they know if you go to the police, you give a report, you do something, nothing will come back to them. So. I think for now, Cindy, what I'm asking for is the government of South Africa to sit down in their parliament and make it a law and put it into practice that whoever does that, something should be done to them. To criminalize so racism. Yes, Ronnie, I get your point. Thanks so much for calling us uh, in Cape Town. So what do you make of that lovely note that the CEO is unable to even pick up the phone and engage us on this platform? Uh, but, you know, they, they send out their carefully crafted PR statement. Yeah, it's, um, I suppose they're playing the game and it, it, you have to kind of expect it. The, the fact that they gave a response is decent enough. Um, but I think in this sort of case with the, the turmoil that it's caused, there should have been at least a representative having a chat to you. I like what Brian said in Pretoria, and I think he just nailed it in that there is no agency or third party that will just come up with or fathom some imaginary mm. brief that the client wants to portray themselves in the marketplace or what they may have wanted. Yeah. I think the unfortunate part is that whoever the account executive may have taken the brief verbatim and yeah. put it out there. No, and, and, and we see that a lot. And the problem is there's human error in all of this. So the client brief might have been very clear in what they stated. The account manager or project manager may have misconstrued the brief. The person who, the copywriter who wrote the, the ad might have been busy that day and have just typed it verbatim. Um, we see stuff like that happening all the time in advertising, but it doesn't excuse it because you, you are employed as a professional and you should be putting out professional work. That is, that's your legacy. 
So you need to be you need to be careful with what you're doing and think very clearly. Mm. I think let's just also empower our viewers in the sense that we do have, um, you know, institutions where you can take your grievances mm. forward if it's uh, the Equality Court or whatever it is. So we rectify this kind of sure. behaviour. But before you respond, let's speak to Ahmed. In hello, Ahmed. Hello, uh, Cindy. Yes, sir. Hi. Don't you think you're a bit un being unfair with uh, Mnet putting the logo on there? Who's See, that? Yes. Isn't it? Isn't the uh, company? Yeah, yeah, but put they put out, out they put out the advert, Ahmed. What do you yeah, mean it's unfair it, it, to put the logo there? Yeah, but shouldn't you put that company's watch name on too? Because they didn't instruct the company no, no. to ask for a white uh, lady, isn't it that? Well, what happened was Mnet was recruiting a content producer. So they've got a agency, Cardi Consulting, uh, who then subsequently got a third party to do uh, the project or the campaign. So ultimately, Mnet is responsible because they are the client in this sense. I, I don't know if that makes but, sense no, to you. But did they accept the advert? That, and did they see the advert before it, it went out? Well, it's out. I mean, who else? They should have been protective of their own brand and logo. Um, you know, I, 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 I'll put it to you, Dick. But Jay, thanks so much. You say, isn't it unfair that we're putting MNA to the logo or trying to tarnish? I don't get it. No, I don't think so at all because, like you say, it's, it's, it's a circle. So the client will put the brief out, the contractor will roll the brief out. That brief should, once executed, should be fed back to the client for client approval and then put out into the public sphere. So that circle should have been completed. And if it had been completed, there's no reason why Mnet's logo should not be anywhere because they should have approved it and it would have gone live. So it's at the end of the day, it falls back on them and it tarnishes their record. Yeah. Do you think maybe the unintended consequence is that there'd be greater scrutiny in the appointment of uh, personnel, especially in executive positions at Mnet? Definitely. I think so if a gonna, white woman is appointed, then it's going to be a ha. Yeah. You've been racist all along. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's going to go all the way through the supply chain. So it's going to be appointments within Mnet, but it's also going to be looking at who are they contracting to now. Now that Ahmed and Kadi have been, you know, sacked, who are the next ones? And what does that makeup of that company look like? If it's an all-white firm, it's to your point. Ah, now we look again, and now we're back in the same position. So they're going to be scrutinized for all the choices now. Okay. Dirk, we're going to have to leave it there. Dirk Fisser is a social media expert joining us in studio. And you at home, thanks for taking the trouble to call in. We do appreciate uh, from Mnet sending us a uh, response to our questions uh, as well. We continue on social media. Do you stay with us. We'll be back after the short break.